Hello everyone, it's Amy, and I am here for part three of Build Your Stash and Craft Week 15, Make Your Own Jelly Plate. And part three is going to be playing with our jelly plate. So this is the second time I've had to do this because I did the other one and it went for like 30 minutes, and I can't upload 30 minutes. I have to do it in parts, so I have to start over. So I'll just show you kind of what I have collected out here. Um, a little spray bottle of water, my craft paints, some different lids and mark makers. I have some corrugated cardboard and some bubble wrap, my little stencils, the our foam stamps, my larger stencils. There's some of the ones I made earlier. I have our brayers here that do work great. And I have some junk mail, some of the first paper I got, some of the paper I got this week that's like newsprint, and some of our cardstock. So I'm going to put the phone up and we're going to start playing. Okay, I've got my camera up now. Here we go with take two. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, let's see. We've got our jelly plate. It's been 24 hours because I didn't get a chance to do it yesterday. There was just between all the between dinner and lunch and snack and everything else. Um, I just didn't have time, so I've been so excited to try this with you. And I hope if you don't have a jelly plate, I hope you give this a try because it's so much fun. I'm going to use our medium-sized brayer, which on our medium-sized brayer, um, it is a little bit squishy, so I think I would put a couple more bags in there to make it a little more solid. But And if your paint feels like it's a little bit dry, you can just give it a little spritz with water and that'll help it move around a little bit. These little dots right here, I have not found any way to totally get rid of them. So it, I wouldn't worry about it. I haven't seen anyone actually be able to get rid of them. So, Alrighty, I have got my feather stencil here and I'm going to put it right there and just use a piece of plain white. This is the white pad of paper that I got at the very beginning of the series. And you know, this works on anything. You don't have to really worry about what type of paper you use. Ooh, look how pretty that turned out. Isn't that gorgeous? I like that. Okay, so we're gonna take this off and I kind of just like put my stencil on the roll off paper and give it a wipe but it doesn't really take the paint off so all right now I can decide what I want to do with this let's see what the ghost print looks like I don't think it's going to look great but the thing about jelly plates is you can you can put layers upon layers upon layers if you don't like one that you have even your roll off paper sometimes turn out just beautiful but if they don't put something you know put something else on your jelly plate and put it on there and it looks great I was wondering if we'd get a ghost image, but not so well with this one because of all the paint that I had left on there. But this one can just be used for a background paper for something else. I'm going to just kind of put my paper on here. I hope I'm not rocking too bad. I'm just going to put my paper on here and try and pull some of this off. Now, I can leave it on there. I'm going to do that, too. I'm going to leave that on there, and I'm going to go with some purple. I'm going to do purple in... Well, let's just do purple. Okay. Oops. And I do have to say that I am very, very happy with the brayers. For a handmade brayer for a dollar, it works really well. So, um, don't think that you have to go out and buy an expensive one to do this. All right, there we go. We've got it covered. Like it's moving a little bit. Okay, what do I want to do with this? Let's let's use this flower. Put it right here in the middle. And then I'm going to use the pink paper that we just did. And I'm going to put that, the only thing that's going to come through, 
Once you set it down and it grabs that jelly plate, don't try and move it because the second it touches the jelly plate, it's going to start picking up paint. I was going to move it over just a little bit, but... And then you just kind of massage it in there. Let's see what that looks like. And isn't that pretty on that pink background? Now, that pink background was nothing, but now that's really pretty. You could use that to make the front of a card. You could use it for all sorts of things. Now we're going to take this off. And I'm going to use a clean sheet of paper. And we're going to see what happens with the pink that was still left on there. We're going to see if that lifts up with this purple paint. And see, there it is. So the thing is, when you leave paint on your plate, and you can do that on purpose even, um, when you leave it on your plate, when you put your next layer of, I'm going to peel this off. When you put your next layer of paint on there, it reactivates that paint. It gives it enough water, enough moisture for it to come up. So remember that if you've got yellow on there and you're going to do something purple and you don't want that yellow to show through, remember to wipe it off. And I just like to go around and try and get all the paint I can get off of there. You know, that's nothing right now, but it at some point it's going to make a really nice background. So, but I'm just going to wipe this off. I'm going to give it a little spray with my, whoop, spray it with my water bottle. And just wipe it off. But you don't have to wipe it off. You can leave those layers on there and they give you some really interesting, really interesting backgrounds. And then... The biggest thing that I had to learn was watch my color wheel to make sure that when I blended those colors together that they didn't make mud and look terrible. So now I have found that if you roll this off on your roll off paper, I have not, since I tried this, I have not had any, like I did purple on top of yellow. I did not have any of that purple come off on my yellow. So, um... You don't have to do, you know, I probably shouldn't do orange and green, but I'm going to try it. Um, you don't have to worry about that. So we just did the purple, so let's try it with this one. Oh, and that's way too much paint, but that's okay. It won't hurt anything. Yep, my purple is not coming off at all. wipe that off on my wipe off paper. Now I use newspaper for my wipe off paper today and I don't think I would ever do that again because let's try our leaves. Um, it's not I thought it might look cool and it will. I can use it for some kind of a collage but it's not going to make a pretty background paper. And just massage it. Make sure that when you're using a stencil you get down into into those little spots. Don't push hard, just massage it around. And that's what our leaves look like. Really pretty. And take this off and we'll pull a ghost print from that and see what that looks like. Now the ghost print's gonna be just the opposite. It should be colorful all the way around and light where those, where I already pulled that paint off from the leaves. And there it is. And and you probably can't see it very well, um, but there are the light spots where the leaves were. So you can like actually doodle around those to make a card or something. And we've still got quite a bit on there, but I'm just gonna put some more of the same colors on and I'm gonna show you about stamping. Better watch my time this time. And you can, this paint is quite thick, um, you can, oh, let's use the other sprayer so you can see them. Um, you can water your paint down. 
So, and I, and I actually think that what I did was with my original jelly plate, I pulled out all of my old, now see this one is slipping, so I definitely would put some glue inside there like we talked about, put some glue in there to glue that, because now we know that it does work. And like a regular brayer, it does kind of leave a mark at the edges, but that's all right. There we go. Now to stamp with these, all you do is you just take a stamp and you can just go in there and pull that paint off. Now you definitely want to stamp off like this. Okay, and you can use this actually like for an ink pad. Um, but if you don't, and I'm just grabbing my color, I'll do it here. Um, if you don't stamp off, it won't pull off as much paint the next time because it's already you've already got paint on it. So you do have to stamp off each time to make sure that you're pulling off paint at each area. There. Okay, so now we've done that. And we will grab a piece of paper. Let's use a piece of cardstock. Okay, I've got this cardstock here that we got earlier. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this right in the middle. Kind of in the middle. And just you know, just give it a good rub. Make sure that you're making contact everywhere. And you know, my problem is sometimes I can sit here and do this forever, and be like, what are you doing? Go to the next step. And there we go. And then they're just nice and faint in the background. And I think that that looks really nice. That makes a great background for a card. And let's just um, use the other half of this one. See if we can get some more of that paint off there. And actually that one looks better than the first one so and a lot of times you'll find out that your second print looks better than your first print so I am going to upload this really quick and then I'll come back and we'll make marks okay I'm back and we're going to use some of our mark makers now so I'm going to just use some blue and some purple some blue some purple and so the biggest thing is you know when you make these don't get discouraged if you have some that you think don't look pretty we're going to use our big roller now which covers the whole thing but you know what you think turns out ugly and you will have some that you will think turned out ugly um i always do and whether it be your I'm going to put a piece of regular paper here for roll-off paper. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, so because of the the marks on the paper towel roll, I got those marks on my roll-off paper, and I like that. I'm going to set that aside just like it is. Um, okay, now let's make some marks. And remember one thing, don't forget to stamp off. Um, don't push too hard. That's the one thing to remember. Um... If you have some that you don't think looked good, this is just off of a flower that I tore apart and I put some masking tape on the back so I could push down and pick it up. The ones that you have that you think did not turn out pretty, um, sometimes make the prettiest flowers or cards or, you know, so don't be discouraged when you get, you think, oh, well, I don't like the way that that turned out. It's okay. So it'll all, you'll be able to use it for something. You can use it for borders. I should have put a piece of masking tape on the back of this. Let's do a bigger, let's do a little oval. That one I opened the lid so that I can use it like that. Let's, um, do it like this. And if you water your paint down, it doesn't dry as fast also, which is another nice thing. So let's do a couple of 
circles here. And let's do a couple little tiny circles from this bottle. Those are much wider because of the lip on it. That's kind of cool. I'll put one in the center of some of these flowers. Okay, let's pull that off and see what it looks like. I'll do that on a piece of cardstock. I'm going to go this way. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, so don't, don't think that anything is don't ever throw any away. You never throw anything away. Um, you can always use it for something. So let's see what this one looks like. Isn't that cool? I really like that. That looks kind of spacey. And I'm going to... There's not much left here, but I'm going to see what's left. It doesn't look like anything. But I'm going to see if I get a ghost print. Sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't. And there we go. A little bit, not much. I'm going to use this paper to grab the paint off. And, <coughs> excuse me, when you want to change colors, and you want to make sure that there's no leftovers, because the leftovers will come up with your next print, um, just use a wet paper towel and just go in and just wipe it off. I'm going to give it a spray because my paper towel is getting dry. You can use a baby wipe, too, if you have a baby wipe. I haven't had baby wipes in 25 years. Okay, well, I've had some for crafting, but I haven't had any for my kids. Let's do some pink and purple. But yeah, so this is just, it's really fun to play with. And I would love to see what you come up with. Let's roll that out. And let's try our corrugated cardboard. We'll just put this right in the middle and give it a little massage. And then I'm going to use some bubble wrap. I didn't have any bubble wrap since we started this series. I hadn't got anything with bubble wrap. I was getting so disappointed because I don't use anything that I have not collected since this series started. And then just day before yesterday, my hubby got a package that had a little bit of bubble wrap in it. And then don't forget that you can use that to push onto another piece of paper. See? That turns out cool. Let's see what this one turned out like. Hmm. We'll do it this way. And again, once that paper touches, you can't move it. And that turned out pretty neat. I'm going to use this piece of paper to try and lift some of that off. There we go. So, but I'm going to be playing with this some more today. And I hope that I hope that you give it a try and have a good time. I know that I really love it, and it's just a nice, relaxing thing to do. So, there we go. Alright, now I'm going to look through my papers here. I'll show you what we've got. First things first, let's clean off our jelly plate. I'm going to clean this off and set it aside. Make sure you get the edges too. Otherwise your paint might turn kind of crusty and come off on your next project and you don't want that to happen. There we go. Now I would set this aside and just let it kind of sit a little bit to dry, I guess I want to say. Um, it's obviously not going to dry dry because it's a damp type thing. But 
and set it aside. Let it sit for just a little bit for that water that I just put on there. And then I'm going to put this on here and that's how I'm gonna store it away. I'm gonna take it off for now. And let's see what we've done. So we have this one with our mark makers. And this one with our mark makers. This was just a roll off sheet. Sometimes you get really pretty roll off sheets. And then we have our flower where I showed you how if you leave paint on there, it will lift off with your next print. We've got the feather is gorgeous. That would make a beautiful card. And our leaves. And you can cut these leaves out, cut them out and put them on a project. We've got this one where we used the little flower stamps to lift off some of the paint. And then this one turned out even better. And that was our second ghost print. We have this one. And we have this flower with this kind of where I put a bunch of extras. And then we have this one. So what I'm going to do is I think that this sheet and this sheet out of everything they turned out the worst and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make something out of these sheets and I'm gonna come back and show you what I made out of them so that you could so that you can see that no matter what your sheets look like um, they they can be made into something so and if um if you'd like, we're going to call this number one. I'll put a little one on here. And we're going to call this one number two. Put it down here in this blank spot. And let me see what I had earlier when I had to, when I couldn't upload it. Because I had some there that, okay, we're going to call this right here. The feathers turned out beautiful. But we're going to call this number three. And we're going to call this number four. Okay. So if you would tell me which one you think is the least appealing, and I will make something out of it. So we have sheet number one. And I know you don't like, you know, you don't want to tell somebody, well, I think that your stuff is ugly, but I'm telling you, I think that these ones didn't turn out very pretty. So you tell me which one you think is the least pretty. So we've got one, two, three, and I'm not counting the feathers on that one, just that part, because the feathers are pretty, and four. So you choose one, two, three, or four. If you'd put that in the comments, which one you think is the least appealing, and I'm going to make something pretty out of it. So that's, that's, that's what I would like to do. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'm so happy with my pretty, pretty jelly plates. I am going to go and get together the stuff for next week, and then I will be back. Okay, I'm back, and what we're going to need for next week is this Max Patch Spackle, and this is from the Dollar Tree, and um, you can get it in any hardware store. It's at the hardware section of the Dollar Tree, and um, this is a really nice size because when I first started using Spackle for texture, I went to Menards and I got, you know, like a tub of it. It, it wasn't huge, but it was probably like a quart size. And I used quite a bit of it and then got off to doing other things. And when I went back to use it again, it was all moldy. So this will go a long ways and it's only a dollar. So this is from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And then I also, in the cooking section, I got this chopper scraper from the Dollar Tree. I like it because it's got this nice straight line with um with the ruler on it. We don't need the ruler for this, but I still like that ruler on there and I like the way, you know, that I can hold it like this instead of holding it like with something with a handle. And if you don't like this holding it like this, you can get just um like putty spreaders or whatever at the Dollar Tree also in the same hardware section where you get this. So either one, you need some kind of a spreader and your Max Patch for next week. Now that's only $2. So for this week, use your extra $3 to buy things that you need. Um, I am, you know, look at what you've already got and pick up the things that you're running out of 
because like I am almost out of this glue. So I went ahead and I think actually I think two of my glues are empty and I only have one part way left. And I also picked up another roll of masking tape because I used that to make my roll top desk and it's almost gone. So and then I picked up um, skewers. And I picked these up just because there's always times where you need to stir something, mix something, um, you know, just, they just work good. You know, you can put flowers on the end of them and, you know, make little spikes for your plants. But I just find that the skewers just come in handy so often that I just wanted to have them on hand. So this is what I spent my extra $3 on. You spend your extra $3 on whatever it is that you would like if you want more paint um, or if you're almost out of something, use your extra money to do that. So this is what we need for next week. And then if you, if you wouldn't mind again, if you would vote on the ugly picture number one, or number two, or number three, or number four. And I will go ahead, whichever one gets the most votes, I will make something pretty out of it to show you that no matter what your jelly plates turn out like, even if you don't like them, um, first off, somebody else may like the ones you don't like. But secondly, no matter what they look like, you can always do something with them even if it's put something else on top of them. But I'm going to use these, and I'm going to make something which, with whichever one gets the most votes. Well, I hope that you enjoy your jelly plate if you make one, and I hope that you enjoyed this video series, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.